Hello, whole new day later. Today we're converting the rears to five lugs. So if you look, we're missing a stud. Um, that's pretty much about it. But I'm doing a five lug with a caliper with a rotor, that's better. And to do this is very damn easy. I'm replacing this entire piece. So all you gotta do really is just loosen the brake line, get that undone. There's two bolts on this control line, get those out. I think they're 17s. Get that bolt out. And then this guy, only literally three main bolts are holding on to this entire unit. That comes off. And just make sure you undo the brake line. And yeah. Yeah. So we're down here. There's a bolt on this like lower control line piece. It's 17. Get your impact and just knock that boy loose. Make sure you use impact sockets, not chrome, because it's illegal. Oh that won't go in. There you go, ready? Boom. And this will drop. All you need is a pry bar. Let me just put it down. Oh, look at that. It's already falling. All right, leave. Oh, he's starting to fall. Two down here. Now, for this side, there's two 17s. One there, one there. You have an impact. Awesome. You have to unbolt it with a breaker bar to do it. But we got a blessing. Oh, yeah. All right, that's one. Oh, God, it's falling. All right, those bolts are out. Wait, 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 wait. Look at that. Oh, I this... forgot. <laughs> what is that? Oh, yeah, that's the brake cable. All right, I forgot. I got to undo the shock. Because the shock is staying there. Oh, man, there's a few things we got to <laughs> undo. All right, so remember to undo the brake. I'm, since you're doing conversion, you got to swap out the cable. Oh, there's just a couple 12 mils, I'm pretty sure it is. I go all along the side. Next thing to do is, is undo the stock, which is, there's a 17 back here. Oh, we gotta undo the sway bar end link. I forgot about that little asshole. You see what we're doing? Maybe. <laughs> so we're gonna get to the shock, the stock bolt, which is in the bottom. So all it is, well, all you really should need is a swivel, a 17, this. Make sure you have impact graded one, not the chrome one, cause it's not good. Oh! That battery is heavy. Uh, all right, we're gonna play a game of risking things. So we're gonna take the jack out. Oh, it's gonna fall. No, it ain't. We got the sway bar. Shout out to sway bar. Oh, you broke your springs, damn it. Oh no. All right, this might fall. This time it probably will. Oh, yeah, yeah. Put that there to remember. So, power. I'm gonna get that bolt out. <laughs> All right, shock bolt is out. Basically ready to fall, but I'm gonna do the sway bar end link, which is a 13 or four. I think it's a 14. Let's find out. Boy, it's a 14. Okay, that's a far reach. I'm gonna get the homie extendo. Damn it, we need an adapter. I want it to come out. Nope. Of course not. Yeah, put something to hold it. Man, that that end link's probably gonna break. Alright, so next clip. This this guy removed the sway bar end link. You guys should hopefully know how to do it. You get a pry bar, shove a vice grip in the back. Get that sway bar end link out. What's your secret? Put some good old brake fluid on that bad boy. The secret Krabby Patty formula. The cheapo special. Exactly. And he's a little. It can last you forever. I heard you can use it on your paint to shine it up nicely too. Oh yeah, it'll be so good. It'll make it shiny. It'll be bare metal. <laughs> Don't try this at home, please. Man, I should have done I want to be cool. <laughs> All right, we come out. Oh, 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 oh. It's smoking. Hey, the drum is out. There's that. That's the way to remove your drum. One less thing that could fall on your head. Yeah. I mean, if you want, you can just remove this big-ass nut and put a new hub. But then you need a 
you know, what's it called? A drum that's five lug. You can grow these out, but fuck that. One might wonder why are you doing all of this bullshit? I hate spray bar end legs. These ones are awful. You're burning up the fluid. Yeah. Jeez. I made a couple love marks to my pry bar. I can stop filming this part. This is <laughs> To be continued. Oh, maybe I could put it in. Oh, I'm recording. <laughs> now we got a vice grip in. I'm gonna tighten the piss out of it. Mm. Okay, that's tight as hell. Now I'm gonna use my Milwaukee vice grip. Oh, that would be nice. But we'll use this crappy auto zone. No, advanced auto one. We'll put it in. Now I take it out. Yeah, you can see it. Just... <laughs> Either the threads are gone or it's just slipping. So we're gonna tighten this a little more. Oh, mm -hmm. I think I think those vikers are really bent right now. Look at the vice oh grip. <laughs> These vikers are gone. <laughs> well, it happens. So we're just gonna keep attempting until it works, hopefully. Ah. <sighs> It'll work at one point. I literally do have a nicer set in there. Yeah. I'm probably a bit stronger. Oh, I, I believe it. You know, sometimes. Why don't you, you don't have Allen wrenches? They go through the stud and it's really, then you can't use that. You gotta use yeah. a wrench and wrench suck. Oh, all right, let's see. Oh, they slipped off. We're gonna figure it out. I mean, you could get a, the angle grinder and chop it off. <laughs> I, missed, I didn't get that on video. What? <laughs> I had it on photo, not video. <laughs> Your fingers aren't cold? Nope. I don't know why all of a sudden my fingers are frozen. Yeah, I feel like I'm touching everything. Yeah, you're using it. Oh, Do you have crowbars? I mean, you can get your crowbars at the farmer's market for two bucks. Well, yeah, I haven't got a crowbar yet. No. Ooh, this does the job. It doesn't work. Wow, it doesn't drop. Oh, maybe because of the rain? Impressive. Right, we'll mess with that in a little. Next is, we're going to do the brake line. Now, brake fluid is going to get everywhere. So, we should get some paper towel. Get your 10 millimeter. Loosen this brake line all the way. Hey guys, so we got the brake line free. I'm a clip out. Clip was not as easy as you thought. You want to get the clip out? Grab one of these bad boys. These things make the life easier. But yes, uh, that's the nasty clip. This annoying thing. Got it out. Now this is free. You got to get the back one out. Which you can use your pry bar or you can make it come on. New development. All right, guys, we got an update. That that thing doesn't want to come off because there's like a lip. My car is just so loud. I just bent that stub frame, and it just doesn't want to come out. It should easily come off, but this is my struggle. So we're gonna have to bend the stub frame or figure something out. Hey, boys and girls. So my control arm it wouldn't come off because this piece was bent. I'm kind of a little low, so when I scrape, <laughs> it bent that back. It bent it in place and it locked it. I see the other side, totally bent still. <laughs> All of my gas tank's grief, but anyway, um, it's very safe because it locked the control on, so that means that control on would never fall. But it sucks for like, you know, future Kevin to work on it. What we're gonna do is, my idea is, instead of bend, it's gonna bend back, we're gonna bend it all the way forward, so, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it'll be better. So, right now it's like, straight, see what we're doing. We're gonna bend it forward. So next time it can fall out if the bolt fails. <laughs> yeah, it'll fall out instead of, you know, being hard to remove. I don't think I have to remove this, to be honest. I should leave it. We're trying to make future Kevin a little happy. Look cool. Well, you bend that whole thing too much that you might not be able to get that bolt in there, right? Did you 
have bent it quite a bit. Oh, that's future Kevin problem. Okay. And look at that, boys. Now you need to... This whole thing might move forward now, but look at that. Now our controller will fit in there like a piece of cake, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's totally, uh, totally safe. Yeah, uh, now we're just going to do these. There's only, there's a 12 millimeter, that cable. There's only a 12 here, 12 there, and then it just goes right down there. Very easy to get to. It's not as hard as you think. So, let's knock them out oh look there's my gloss with a damn horn hi guys there's been a battle um so the dummies out the the new rsx spindle is ready to go in so to do it you have to remove the center console which is pretty annoying but all you have to do is there's these three bolts loosen that and when you loosen this well, this can come off. Oh, there's only three because you gotta raise this up. So lift up the handle a bunch, put some vice grips on the cable, then knock this out. And then once that's knocked out. All right, Chris wants to get the hell out of here. So <laughs> we're gonna shove this bad boy in. It's cold. So it's reverse process. So put that where it goes. It'll be in right now. Hello. A couple days later. So, um, got one side in. Took a lot of tweaking around and stuff. This was the hard part. So we had a uh, hammer the crap out of it to make this low control arm fit. Then when we finally got it to go in, that bolt wouldn't go because the welded nut on the other side, there used to be a welded nut there, it was stripped. So, I got another, I got my hammer and chisel, and I took this thing out. It's only held on by like three little spot welts right here. So, I hammered it a bunch of times, battled it, took this nut off, and now, I just put a regular nut. That's way easier and simpler. So now, everything's back in place. Hopefully, the other side is not too much of a battle. But the only thing I am struggling with is... This bolt does not come off. I hammered the piss out of it. I impacted it. It is seized onto like the actual spindle piece itself. So I gave up. Um, I mushroomed the crap out of this. So I just got my flat disc, smoothed it out, made it into like a little point pretty much. And now a nut can fit on there nice and smoothly. Look at that. Like. I never hammered it. So I'm going to put a good amount of anti seize on here. And we're just going to bolt it up right here. The line's already undone. It's very basic to undo this. All you got to do is lift up the handbrake. Grab some vice grip. Put on the cable. Put the handbrake down. And undo this little guy. It's not too bad. It's pretty simple. The car is completely taken apart. I'm gonna put anti put a bolt on here, make this a complete spindle. We're under here, it was on here, knocked it out. I don't like these. All I used was a chisel and a hammer. Popped right out. Now it is all bent and deformed, deformed, but we can bend it back. All you really need is just a big ass adjustable and just some strength and just bend it in place. Hopefully you guys can see this, but this used to be a lip that was bent in, and I'm just starting to bend it out. I'm just gonna time lapse this. Oh, I use this an adjustable, and I just fold everything back into place for how I want it to go. So we got the other side on, very simple. Two bolts down there, this bolt here, and one bolt back there. I converted it to a nut. Gotta do this, these again, that guy, the opposite, so, opposite side from here. I think this drops on, oh, yeah, very simple. I already got the line, the brake line hooked up. The cable basically lines up 
I'm actually hooking it up right now. So here's what you do. You just lift this up, put this vice grip on the other side, put the handbrake back down, and now put the, you know, that little pin on top. And I make that line, I make this line go into the gap, and you're done. I can't film it, but um, right now I'm trying to get this through there. Here's what it looks like when I'm done. But that's what it should look like right here. This thing should go up just like that. Just kind of go down. I don't know why. That's it. I'm just going to tie in these two 12. Oh, yeah. Another thing. Got to loosen this to, to remove these in the first place. So the original drum brake ones, got to loosen just these two. Not this one. Gotta loosen these. And these will pop out. This is why zip ties were invented. So if you look at this side. Ties even wet. Look at this. It goes back and forth, right? You go up, put it down. See? This lip is getting caught with this bracket. I don't know if that's gonna affect Yeah, it's definitely gonna affect it. Look how crooked the assembly is. So, what I did was zip tie on the bottom, zip tie on top, and then zip tie holding it all together. So, see how that gets caught? That's annoying. See that? Now look at the other side, it doesn't go down. It just goes down a little bit, but it's better than that. That's annoying, and it'll probably wear down. So, I'm going to do the same thing, and we'll see how it goes. Check it out. Wow. It doesn't get locked anymore. So, hamburger. up. No more locking. It's all good. And check this out. So, hamburger is up. And look. It locks it. That's so cool. It did the same thing to the other side too. That's incredible. And I haven't even bled it. I haven't bled the brakes yet. That's cool. That cable is actually working. And now time to snip the zip ties. Look how professional that looks. That's so good. And that is amazing next thing i got to do is clean up these rotors but in the process of it i got my impact screwdriver that that happened wow that sucks so um time to figure something out and here you go rear spindles are all out Oh yeah, so real quick, calipers are red. I'm not about that. Red, so we're gonna change that up. Oh, and these are my wheels, by the way. They don't spit at all, but I think I have a solution for it. Yeah, as you can see, they poke out like a freaking inch. Now, like an inch and a half, it's crazy, but they look cool. Okay, um, let's change the colors on those calipers. This is the passenger side. We got nasty red. Oh, by the way, I loosened the bleeder screw. It didn't strip or anything. It wasn't sheathed. And then I put some anti-seize in there. Always put anti-seize on them because then next time you gotta bleed them or something. It's a safety thing where, you know, it won't be seized up and it'll come off. But here's how it looks right now. And there's the after. I'd rather see that than the red. I've learned to not love red too much. Sometimes I do. I'm not going to lie. But it has to be fitting. That red just didn't look right to me. So, black is clean. And tomorrow we're taking off this rotor. This one's a little stuck. So I put uh, brake fluid all on the studs and in those little holes. So hopefully tomorrow, one smack and it should come off. Other side already came undone. It's already loose. But woo! Almost done. Five lug conversion is going pretty smooth. Just a few more things left. I gotta put the brackets on for the handbrake cable. I need to get the sway bar end links. Gotta get the sway bar end link fully mounted. And then last thing is I gotta bleed the calipers. Oh, and then I gotta clean the rotors too. Just like that. A couple of love taps later. I hit it right here. Boom. Not here because you don't want to bend this. Smashed it around, got it loose. I just waited one whole day. And I did put brake fluid and that 
helped a lot. Now, for it to not happen in the future, I'm going to paint this black. And after that, I'm going to put a little bit of antifreeze on this ring. Because this ring was pretty messed up. All right, now for the other side. Oh, and by the way, these are 14 millimeter bolts. They're so annoying to get to. You need a wrench. So first, listen to one of these wrenches. And then use the ratchet wrench. Unfortunately for me, I broke mine. I just I made it into a neutral because I kind of put too much force on it when I was trying to loosen it and paid the price. But it's a Husky, so we can get a new one, lifetime warranty. So here's the other side. Oh yeah, all I'm doing right now is loosening these two 40 millimeter bolts that are holding on to the caliper. One there, one in the bottom. Pretty basic. Loosen these, move caliper. Oh, another thing you gotta do is loosen this bracket because when you try to take the caliper off and you're moving it out, this line is stretching. So you gotta loosen this, get out of the way like that. And then this caliper can come off nice and easily. So here's how the rotor looks. Looks pretty rough and beat up. So we got a we got a little flap disc. It is a 60 grit. So it's gonna go around, make it nice and smooth. And yeah, clean it up. So here's how it looks now. Boom, just like that. They're nice and clean. Way better than how they used to be. Now I crush it more. I'm gonna give these a little coat of paint on the outer, you know. I'm just gonna paint these black so it doesn't get too rusty again. Hey guys, so a little update on the brake cable. So these rubber garments, I couldn't put them in there. So I just put a shelf tapper on them. Now they're basically covering the hole. And then if you look, these brackets, I bent them to go into ways that I wanted to, because these are locked, these don't move. So I bent this one into like a little, like a weird U shape, made it fit in there. And I won't hit the frame because if you look, I scrape and I want to make sure it hits the frame, not the bracket. So the bracket's safe, cable's tucked up. Over there, there's a zip tie holding that up. Over here, bent this bracket, this little pin was in the way. All I used was adjustable and some tantalized. Got that in place. Follow it here, got this in place, put a zip tie. If you put it here, it was too tight. So I, made, so I put it. You know, like a nice flow. And it's nice, it's a little tight still, but if I left it here, if you look, it would have been way too tight when I bent this up. But hey, this is solid. I trust it, cables are nice and tucked up. I have a zip tie there. This one needs a zip tie right over here. As you look, the back right here, there's like nowhere for it to go. I'll put a zip tie. And hang it right here with a zip tie. It'll be fine there for now. But hey, all tucked up. Almost ready to go. Oh my goodness. That's sick. I love how that came out. Oh, uh, update. Everything basically tightened. Um, They came out good. Handbrake worked phenomenal. Only one thing I left out because it's pretty complicated and after these things, I left one sway bar end link undone, which is on the driver. Well, I painted everything black, but I don't know if you can see, but that sway bar end link, I couldn't get to it. Pretty tricky, pretty annoying. I'm already tired and frustrated enough. It's not good, it's quite finally drivable. It's literally been sitting for like a week, like, Things kept going wrong. I've been busy. Been having to, been having to help a bunch of my friends with their cars. But finally, my car is down. Got some 17s on. I am gonna have different wheels in the future. I just need to run a bit of camber. But hey, uh, I'll update you guys when there's more light out. Hello, next day later, nice out. So, we got the rear wheels on. These are SI wheels and oh man, they are beautiful. And I love how it's literally tucking the damn wheel. <laughs> so sick. But hey, the flap disc job 
worked out phenomenal. Calipers were great. Calipers came out beautiful. Suspension is all good. I don't hear any clunks or anything. This tire is bad. But we painted everything black, so hopefully when it snows, not too much to get too rusty. But seriously, this came out so good. And the handbrake works phenomenal. Before one of the before the handbrake didn't work too good because only one caliper was getting tightened. And it wouldn't even get that tight to be honest. And another thing I noticed when I brake the pedal is more firm. Before the brake felt a little bit spongy, like in the beginning, then it get hard. Now the now the brakes feel super firm. So bleeding the rear caliper really helped a lot. And then the front, front is sick. Uh something I found out about this is so I put a new ball joint in, I hammered it in. Here's some photos. Uh there's still a lot of camber. So what I'm pretty sure happened. The actual spindle itself is probably bent. I got these front spindles off of our EP3SI. That's an accident. And this entire side was like totaled. So I'm pretty sure it has to do with that being bent. And that's why the tire popped. So I got a new tire. And so what I did was to resolve the problem, I put a one inch spacer. And dude, look, it's still tucked in. It just has that much camber. It looks cool, but. Oh well, it doesn't rub or anything. It's, it's cool. Uh, back is beautiful. I honestly love how the service is coming out. As you can see, we got the red nose and the antler. Because Christmas, you gotta have that Christmas spirit. I love how the Civic is coming out. It's so damn good. I love it. But the five lug conversion came out awesome. Uh, flat disc in your rotors is a good idea. The brakes start better than before. Yeah, oh, and the handbrake is awesome. Right now, the Civic is kind of taking apart right now. But I'll put it on later today. Okay, that'll be it for this video. Enjoy this little edit.